I design, I make, I cause to be built large structures that shape cities. How, when we come to an assignment as an architect, how do we start and what do we need to make our start? The collection of buildings, of cultural accomplishments around you are formidable. You're adding a chapter to a book in which the masters uh, have worked. And I would say if I knew how important they were, I probably wouldn't dare do them. The essence of architecture is that it's about everything. It's about how you live. It's about what you want. It's about aesthetics, but it's also about practicality. It's rare, maybe it's impossible, for a work of architecture to achieve perfect equilibrium, but every now and then it happens. So, where should we begin? No architect really works with a completely blank slate, and yet nobody constrains us in the very beginning. A fresh project is a fresh piece of paper. Thinking about the tower of one Vanderbilt, our task was to, and challenge was to connect one of Manhattan's most important transit centers, Grand Central Terminal. So that building, which is one of the great pieces of civic architecture, public architecture in the world, is itself a kind of closed stone box. We wanted to complement that with a glassy lantern at the base of this building. But we also knew that the building had to, in some sense, taper. It had to follow the spirit of some kind of setback regulations, bigger setbacks at the base going to more and more vertical structure as we move to the top because the whole point is to get light and air down to the street. It's not something we can think through from scratch with an intention to have everything work out. There's a little bit of trial and error. Some of my colleagues have likened the process of making architecture to playing jazz because you're not sure where you're going with it, but you sort of feel the progress when you're making it. And be very happy to take that sketch and For a building to be truly great, it has to give you as profound an aesthetic experience as the greatest painting, the greatest novel, the greatest piece of music. And yet at the same time, it has to solve functional problems that they don't have. Architectural history is filled with collaborations between architects and engineers. Engineers are necessary either to enable an architect's imagination to be realized or to show that it cannot be built and then encourage the architect to move in a different direction. I'm Silvia Marcus and I'm a structural engineer. I had an uncle that uh, he was a bridge engineer. So initially I wanted to be a bridge engineer, but uh, in my mind, that bridges are too uniform. Buildings, they are not two of them identical. Each one has particularities. Each one has its own characteristics, its own demands. There's an engineering discipline for almost every aspect of a building. Lighting engineers, soils engineers, curtain wall engineers, acoustical engineers. Anything that works in a way that needs to be predictable has a component of engineering. The architect's job is really to try to understand as much as possible of those disciplines in order to be a good partner. How we start with a blank piece of paper. When we were doing 432 Park, we tested with a wind tunnel testing. We did many testing and we couldn't get the proper response. The greatest force we have to contend with in designing a tall building is not the force of gravity, the vertical force, it's a lateral force. And that's because when we get to this height and this aspect ratio of width to height, 
the building acts as a lever. How about if we leave a couple of floors open so the wind can go through? And if this to be repetitive a number of times throughout the height of the building, maybe this will improve on the displacement of the building. There's a dialectic that goes back and forth and back and forth. You're not sure who's teaching who or who's learning from whom. Some people say, what's the engineering? Oh, if it's concrete, how many rebars are in the concrete? It's incorrect. That's a detail. Whoever is interested just in numbers cannot have a full perspective of life. You are using the a tennis match that uh, uh, it's a good uh, analogy but i think that the i have a better one how about the dance <laughs> that's exactly i know you're a dancer and it's a dance between the architect and the engineer working with somebody who, who's really a brilliant a creative thinker of science and engineering i'm inspired by what he brings to the table. Uh, the challenge is one of synthesis. It's bringing together uh, many topics, many subjects, many issues, and finding a solution that's beautiful in its simplicity while solving many complex problems. Science is about finding patterns and truths in nature. Art is about interpreting the world in a more instinctive way. But they inform each other. They use each other, they need each other, and they enrich each other. Art and science are inevitably intertwined.